Hello, I'm Dr. Roger Bedoya, and I'm a specialist in diabetic eye care. Diabetes remains the leading cause of blindness among Americans, and yet with early detection and timely treatment, we can prevent blindness in nearly everyone with diabetes. The following video is about diabetic retinopathy. You probably know that if you have diabetes, your body doesn't use or store sugar properly. This can cause changes in blood vessels throughout your body, including your eyes. Diabetic retinopathy is a disease that damages the retina of the eye. In this video, we'll learn how diabetic retinopathy occurs and what you can do to control the progress of the disease and prevent vision loss. Remember, with early detection and timely treatment, we can prevent blindness in nearly everyone with diabetes. Timing is everything, so let us check your eyes soon. Thank you. If you have diabetes, your body does not use or store sugar properly. This can cause changes in your veins, arteries, and capillaries that carry blood throughout your body, including your eyes. These changes can harm your vision. There are a number of eye problems that can be associated with diabetes, including cataracts and glaucoma. This video, however, will discuss diabetic retinopathy, a disease that damages the retina of the eye. There are two types of diabetic retinopathy that can lead to vision loss. One type is called non-proliferative diabetic retinopathy, or NPDR. Another type is called proliferative diabetic retinopathy, or PDR. There is another menu item on this DVD that looks at NPDR and the treatment options available. But here, we'll be looking at PDR. We'll meet people who have PDR, talk about how it occurs, and what you and your ophthalmologist can do to control the progress of this disease and how to prevent vision loss. First, to understand diabetic retinopathy and how it affects your vision, let's take a look at how the eye works. Light rays enter the eye through the cornea, pupil, and lens. These light rays pass through the vitreous, a clear gel-like substance that fills the middle of the eye. The light rays are focused on the retina, a light-sensitive tissue lining the back of the eye. The macula is a very small area at the center of the retina that gives us our fine pinpoint central vision. The area of retina surrounding the macula gives us our peripheral or side vision. The retina converts the light rays into signals that are sent through the optic nerve to the brain. Diabetes can cause your vision to change even if you don't have retinopathy. Quick rises and dips in your blood sugar levels can change the shape of your eye's lens, and this can cause your vision to blur. You can reduce episodes of blurred vision by keeping good control of your blood sugar. Also, if you have diabetes, you should see your ophthalmologist every year for dilated eye exams. This is very important because while vision loss from retinopathy can't be reversed, it can often be controlled if it's detected early. I have had diabetes for at least 10 years, uh, maybe even a little more. I have had eye issues for about three and a half years. I had diabetes somewhere eight, eight to ten years and it was a fairly rapid increase number of floaters to the point where it got to the, uh, it was mixing together so sort of like a, a, a large dark cobweb covering my eyes so that you can see a little light through it. And I did go to the retina specialist and he did do the test and he um, diagnosed me with the uh, diabetic retinopathy. Proliferative diabetic retinopathy, or PDR, is a stage of diabetic retinopathy where abnormal blood vessels begin to grow on the surface of the retina or the optic nerve. This is called neovascularization. With PDR, many blood vessels in the retina close preventing adequate blood flow to the retina. The retina responds to this problem by trying to grow new blood vessels. However, these new abnormal vessels do not provide proper blood flow. They can also bleed as well as lead to scar tissue, which may cause the retina to wrinkle or even detach. If similar vessels grow abnormally in the front of the eye, they can block the drainage channels of the eye and cause high pressure and possibly glaucoma. Both your central and side vision can be affected by PDR. 
Treatment for PDR is often done with laser and it is called PRP or panretinal photocoagulation. It is also known as scatter photocoagulation. The treatment is usually performed in an office setting. For comfort during the procedure, an anesthetic is applied to the eye. The laser is applied to the peripheral retina, avoiding the central macula. This causes the blood vessels to shrink and often prevents them from growing again in the future. It also decreases the chances of the blood vessels bleeding into the vitreous or causing a retinal detachment. In some cases, multiple laser treatments may be necessary. My ophthalmologist explained that uh, he was going to use a laser to, if I remember correctly, cauterize the veins that are bleeding at that time and that it was going to require X number, it was a fairly high number of shots of laser, but it should be relatively painless. I did have two treatments in the left eye. They were over a span of time. I believe it was two to three months in between. I found the vision cleared up significantly, it made a big difference. And the laser treatments have helped me uh, tremendously. Despite having laser surgery, some people with PDR may still develop further problems. Your doctor may recommend treating your PDR with what is called an anti-VEGF drug. Anti-VEGF drugs target a specific chemical in your eye. This chemical, called vascular endothelial growth factor, or VEGF, is critical in causing abnormal blood vessel growth on the surface of the retina, as well as in other parts of the eye. Several drugs have been developed that can block the trouble causing VEGF. An anti-VEGF drug can help reduce the growth of abnormal blood vessels, which helps to prevent bleeding, scar tissue, and other problems that can cause vision loss. The anti-VEGF drug is administered directly to the eye in an outpatient procedure. After the eye has been numbed with an anesthetic, the anti-VEGF drug is injected into the eye with a very fine needle. Some people may need multiple anti-VEGF injections over a period of months. In some cases, anti-VEGF treatments may be combined with laser surgery, or laser treatment may be used alone. It is possible to have a considerable amount of neovascularization and still have good vision for some time. That means that neovascularization may not be caught early enough and serious problems can occur. For instance, the abnormal blood vessels can bleed into the vitreous, the clear gel in the middle of the eye. This bleeding, called a vitreous hemorrhage, can prevent light rays from reaching the retina. One day at work, I noticed kind of a black line or what I thought was a floater in my right eye. Um, and then I immediately went to the ophthalmologist who um, did a test and said that there was bleeding in the eye and he recommended that I go to a retina specialist and have it looked at. A vitreous hemorrhage may not cause permanent vision loss. If it's small enough, you may only see a few new dark floaters, but in some cases, the hemorrhage may be large enough to block out all vision except light and dark. If the blood clears on its own by absorption, some or all of your vision may return. If the vitreous hemorrhage does not clear on its own, it can make further examinations of the retina difficult. If a patient has a severe hemorrhage, a fluorescein angiogram will not work. One technique your ophthalmologist uses to see through the hemorrhage to the back of the eye is ultrasound. Ultrasound imaging is used to create a picture of the retina. Sound waves are sent through the eye and bounce back. A computer is used to read the returning waves and build a picture of the retina. From these images, your ophthalmologist can determine if surgery is necessary. If the hemorrhage is too large or too slow in clearing, or if your ophthalmologist discovers retinal scarring or detachment, a procedure called a vitrectomy may be necessary. After laser treatments, I was able to see quite a bit better in a short amount of time, but uh, before too long, the floaters reappeared, the spiderweb type quality reappeared, and my doctor suggested that it was time to look into having a vitrectomy. Vitrectomy surgery is usually performed in the operating room on an outpatient basis. An operating microscope and small surgical instruments are used to enter the inside of the eye. Blood and scar tissue are removed. At the same time, a laser may be used to prevent further bleeding and abnormal blood vessel growth. To help the retina heal in place, 
the ophthalmologist may place a gas bubble or silicone oil in the vitreous space. The gas bubble will gradually dissolve on its own. Removal of the silicone oil requires an additional procedure. Use of a gas bubble or silicone oil is reserved for eyes with retinal detachment or advanced scar tissue. After vitrectomy, the results of your surgery may not be apparent for months. My vision improved vastly and uh, the recovery was quick and painless and the biggest problem was remembering all the different drops to put in for the next X number of weeks. It should be remembered that the main goal of treatment for diabetic retinopathy is to prevent further vision loss. If you treat retinopathy early, it's not likely that total blindness will occur. Remember, treatment does not cure diabetic retinopathy, but it is often effective in preventing further vision loss. I was one of those people that thought, not me, it's not going to happen to me. I ignored things for a long time. If I had gotten regular checkups, perhaps it could have been diagnosed earlier, and if you are getting regular checkups and taking care of yourself, managing your diabetes, you can avoid all kinds of health issues and just not have problems. Most people with diabetes can retain useful vision. It's important to remember that you can significantly lower your risk of vision loss by maintaining strict control of your blood sugar and any medical conditions. You must also know that diabetic retinopathy can still occur even if your blood sugar is controlled. That means that you should see your ophthalmologist at least once a year, or more frequently, as recommended by your eye doctor, even if you're not having any visual symptoms. Also, if you have any changes in your vision, you should call your ophthalmologist right away. To find out more about diabetic retinopathy and how to maintain your vision, talk with your ophthalmologist. In this video, we have talked about proliferative diabetic retinopathy, or PDR. Another menu item on this DVD addresses non-proliferative diabetic retinopathy, or NPDR.